Hey, and you know, the first thing I kind of am just curious about before we dig into the details is, you know, what's one thing that surprised you most about being a truck driver, you know, maybe something you weren't expecting or surprised by? Definitely the hours are pretty long. Um, I think that's something that is kind of apparent um, going into it. But um, once you get into it and you start actually driving, yeah, it is a, a pretty big commitment. You know, you're away from your family and away from your home uh, a lot of the time. But it's definitely comes with some some pretty big benefits in terms of the pay and the health care and whatnot. So like most things, it, it is a trade off. Yeah. Yeah. It is funny how some of these jobs that we do, you know, whether it's rideshare driving or truck driving, you know, with rideshare driving, it's like, wow, believe it or not, you're going to do a lot of driving, <laughs> you know, with truck, <laughs> True. you don't really realize it until you're actually doing it. You're like, wow, I put 200 miles on my car today, or, you know, I put 1500 miles a week. And, you know, with truck driving, obviously the miles I think is obvious, but it's also the time. It sounds like the time away from family, the time on the road that really, you know, until you're doing it, it sounds like it's hard, even though people tell you it's hard to kind of really understand what it's like until you do it right for sure yeah it's definitely an adjustment and uh, if you've done a lot of traveling before um you know it's it's kind of similar to camping in a lot of ways you know in terms of um finding showers finding places to eat um just living on the road it's it's definitely a lifestyle adjustment but uh you do get used to it after a while Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about I'm someone who, you know, I, okay, uh, hypothetical, I'm ready to go out and become a truck driver. What's the first step that I might take? Or, you know, really, how do I become a truck driver? I guess your first step is going to be to look at what's kind of available in your area. Mm -hmm. Although it is sort of uh, the kind of a kind of job where you travel like 90% of the time, you are going to want to go back to a, a home base at some point, you know, unless you want to live in the truck permanently, which is an option. But it kind of depends on what's available in your area in terms of whether you want to go to like a vocational school and um, go through a, a training program and graduate with your CDL and then pick a company that you want to work for or whether you want to go and train with a specific company, go through their specific training program and then kind of graduate directly into your first job with that company. And I'm assuming vocational school, that's more upfront cost for you. You have to pay for that. And then the other option, I'm assuming they subsidize some of it or all of it. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of times when you go through a vocational school, a lot of the companies that hire folks right out of those schools, they do offer tuition reimbursement programs. Oh, cool. So you might not actually be spending a whole lot out of pocket um, in the long term. But to get started with trucking, you do have to come up with a little bit of cash. It's kind of like going to, you know, joining the military or learning like welding or something. Mm -hmm. It's it's the kind of thing where you do need some some significant training in order to hit the road. Yeah, that makes sense. Which option did you pick? I went with the uh, company training uh, with a company called Millis Transfer. The school lasts for about three weeks. And once you go through the classroom portion, they put you in a truck with a trainer. Mm -hmm. And then you drive your trainer's truck for about six weeks. And he sits in the passenger seat, you know, the whole time and helps you not crash into things and yeah. makes sure you're following the laws and all that. Wow, it sounds like pretty thorough training, especially compared to maybe a rideshare driver who signs up from their couch and then a few days later they are approved and can hit the road and take their first trip. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are similarities, I think, in terms of their willingness to accept new people into the industry. You know, mm -hmm. Uber and Lyft are kind of famous for hiring whoever, you yeah. know, as long as they have a clean background check. And trucking is very similar. A lot of the companies that train drivers will take you kind of no matter what, as long as you've got a you know, a relatively clean criminal record and driving history and whatnot. So it's pretty easy to take that first step, you know, and, and get in. Completing the programs definitely takes a little bit of determination. Um, it's definitely a challenge uh, yeah. to make it through, but it can be done. How long have you been a truck driver for now? I have been driving uh, for about a year. I went to the um, training program at the end of February of last year. Okay. So my one year anniversary of Solo trucking is actually tomorrow. Oh, May wow. 8th. Perfect timing. Well, so what's a real quick, uh, I have a funny question. What's the kind of nomenclature for a truck? Do, do people call them truck drivers? What do you tell people when someone asks you what you do? What do you, what do you say? I'm a truck driver? Yeah, typically I tell them like I'm a long haul trucker. Okay. It's interesting that at truck stops, they refer to people as professional drivers. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of interesting because, you know, that term can obviously apply to uber and lyft drivers i think as much as truckers yeah. who, who calls them professionals at the truck stops each other you guys call that to each other or mostly like the over the truck stop pa when they need to yell at people for taking too long at the fuel island they'll say 
attention professional drivers you know, please pull forward after refueling <laughs> oh interesting it sort of reminds me of like how uber calls all their drivers driver partners right <laughs> right yeah <laughs> interesting so i'm curious to know what's the one thing you know when you were looking at truck driving what's the one thing and doing your research that attracted you most uh, to truck driving was it the money or the hours or the you know you talked about the i guess career opportunities what was the one thing um that attracted you most to truck driving I'd have to say the money, to be mm. honest. It is pretty good. At my current company, they, they guarantee you $50,000 in your first year of trucking. Wow. And that's like a normal W-2 salary, 50000 or? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Um, you know, it makes it easier to qualify for a mortgage and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the long-term picture, it's true that self-driving trucks are coming uh, for, for this industry. Um, I think there's, you know, there's no way around that, but in terms of the timeline for that, I think it's probably a few years off at least. Yeah. And um, until then, there's definitely, you know, the the more you drive it, it consistently it consistently make more money, the more experience that you have. And if you add uh, additional certifications, like if you're willing to drive oversized loads or yeah. hazmat materials, you can definitely also get a lot uh, a lot more money. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I see a lot of ads all over the place, you know, especially when I'm driving outside of the city, you know, when I'm on road trips, I feel like I always see ads for truck drivers. And I feel like I've seen numbers thrown around average salary, you know, 50, 60, 70,000, 90,000. I feel like I see some pretty impressive numbers from time to time. I don't know if you know any offhand, but uh, it sounds like you feel the same way. Yeah, definitely. Um, Walmart is one of the most sought after employers in trucking, actually. Oh, which really? Is Kind of ironic because yeah, they, they're so well say. known for not paying their store associates very well. But if you drive a truck for Walmart, their starting salary is like eighty six thousand dollars a year. Wow. You have to have, I think, thirty months of experience, and uh, I think they limit you to like one moving violation in that time. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a, a, a very good truck driver, <laughs> yeah. in order to get that that kind of position. But it is out there. Another one of the really high paying ones is uh, if you're a local fuel tanker driver mm -hmm. if you're willing to like drive tank loads of gasoline to the to the gas stations that's another job where a lot of guys are out there only four or five days a week getting mm -hmm. home every night and they're taking home you know similar salaries of wow. like seventy eighty thousand dollars a year yeah, that's pretty interesting. And, you know, I know you've done a, a couple articles on truck driving for us and a couple videos, too, over on the YouTube channel. We'll leave a link uh, in the show notes if anyone wants to go and check those out. But that was the one thing that stood out to me when reading uh, about your experience is that, you know, when people think of long haul trucking, I guess they think of long haul, right? <laughs> it's not just long haul. It sounds like there's quite a few different opportunities within the space um, where, you know, it's not just, you know, out on the road. I mean, maybe at the start, it sounds like you got to build your time and your experience but it sounds like there's a lot of options down the road definitely yeah it's a uh, the the career path is very structured in that you do have to start out with that long haul kind of schedule there there are also regional options where um you can go out for runs that are like six days long and then get home for a day and a half mm -hmm. every week but uh you do generally have to stay out <laughs> yeah. during that first year you have to stay on the road most of the time uh in order to get those kind of those high paying local positions. Yeah. But I mean, I guess to me, I, I guess it all depends on your perspective and your situation in life. But I mean, a one or even a two year training period compared to other jobs is very minimal, right? I mean, if you're making, you know, if you can be making 90, let's say best case scenario, you know, if you're at the top of your field and you can get this Walmart job in less than three years of basically training, um, you're, I think $90,000 is a much higher salary than if you were to go to college for three years. Absolutely. Out making yeah, that. In so a lot it's pretty of interesting, right? Yeah, it's it's definitely easier than, you know, going to school to become a lawyer or a doctor. The the money's, you know, maybe not all the way up there, but it's it's pretty close, especially for the amount of time that you're putting in. Yeah. And I think also, too, if you're one of the best, you know, that's one thing that I like, too. It sounds like if you're one of the best drivers, you get rewarded for it. There's a lot of demand for drivers. If you're willing to get extra certifications and do this and do that and go above and beyond, you get paid more, which, uh, you know, we don't often always see that in some, you know, ride share or uh, some of these other services. If I'm a 4.99 star rated driver, for the most part, I don't get anything better or extra than the driver who's just hanging on at 4.65, right? That's very true. And I think that